I have never, ever, ever seen burner tube so filthy before. My God. Wow, look at that. Wow. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for tuning in. It's me, Mikey Pipes. Today is Tuesday, March 18th, 2024. Correction, Tuesday, March 19th, 2024. This morning, it's uh, 7.45 in the morning. I already had my first appointment of the day. Uh, gave a uh, an existing client, uh, well, his parents moved into the neighborhood and I gave him an estimate to do a couple things in the house. I was there at 7.15. And this morning, second appointment of the day, I'm driving to my first service call, which is in New High Park. My loyal community viewers, subscribers, will know that on Saturday evening, just a couple days ago, I went on an emergency service call uh, for a new client that had a Burnham power vented gas fired boiler with the Burnham indirect and he had no heat or hot water. The, uh, the numbskulls that he has working in his home doing some renovations in a couple bedrooms, well, let's just say that <laughs> hacks bring me stacks. The numbskulls turned off all of the return valves on the boiler you know so not only for the two zones of heat but also that one zone indirect on the return side you know unfortunately at the time um the circulators did not appear to be burnt out however i didn't have flow to the second floor we had a lot of maintenance issues with this boiler that you're gonna see and we're going back there this morning to do that maintenance. We're gonna pull all the burners out. We're gonna check the draft inducer motor assembly. We're gonna check all the zones. We're gonna purge, we're gonna bleed, and we're gonna go through that red light like I just did. <laughs> oh my God, the YouTube police. Market Pops, what are you doing, Market Pops? You can't go through red lights like that. What's wrong with you? I'm gonna give you a ticket. So let's go to the service call. Smash that thumbs up button in advance. And after watching the video, let me get your thoughts, comments, criticism down in the comment section down below. Don't forget that smash that thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. It really helps the channel with growth, ranking, and the engagement really helps. So now I am going to stop at this red light because there's a camera that I just passed. <laughs> this is a five we have an alliance burnham indirect we have two heating zones off these two circ off these two zone valves with this one circulator we got this one circulator that's feeding the indirect when i got here uh saturday night all of these i kid you not were closed no heat or hot water anyway we are going to do some maintenance here. We got a bucket. Huge shout out to Jasco in the Bronx. Thank you so much for the Bronx area. Please buy for them. Support those who support the channel. Jasco on 4225 Peters Place in the Bronx. Give them a call. 718-994-1360. We got our bucket. We have our nice larger diameter washing machine hose. We have our FLIR, which unfortunately sucks. Thermal imaging camera. We have a new Tridicator gauge. That one obviously has seen better days. Looks like it's partially submerged in water. Looks like it came up from under the Titanic. We have our Milwaukee M18 wet dry vac. We got our Testo combustion analyzer. This is the 320. I use the 300 case. We have our knee pad and we have our Vito TPXXL. Put all our tools in there. Let's take a look under the hood. The Burnham. 
Oh, good catch. PVG. Looks like Universe has been here. Let's see. We did a PM in 2014. And it looks like they did a Cirque in 2021. Just stuck it right on there. Yeah, that's that's real nice. Look at the dirt and dust inside this bad boy. And that's why we're here today. Full tune-up. We're also going to check this capacitor on the uh, draft motor. Make sure that's within range. You know, if that thing dies, this is not going to run properly. And we're not going to have any heat or hot water again. And these are expensive. Especially on a Saturday or a Sunday when all the supply houses are closed and you got to open up a supply house. Not fun. PVG5, 140,000 BTU gross. Output of 120. All right. Power's off. Let's turn the gas off. And uh, let's start cleaning. All right, since we are going to be draining down the boiler to change the pressure reducing valve that was sticking uh, very hard to open, doesn't manually feed the way it should, we're going to turn off the water to the boiler and we're going to start draining down. Someone recently gave me an idea of taking a nipple and a brass or black T and putting it to the bottom of the hose. That'll weigh it down so when you purge or bleed, it doesn't want to jump out of the, the bucket for you. Great idea. All right, we're going to let this bad boy drain down. Uh, let's open up this zone. Might as well bleed everything out when we're done. And let's open up that zone valve to manually hold it open. Let's open up this zone valve, manually hold it open. Make sure they stay there. Okay. And now we can drain down the entire system like gravity. Work to our fit advantage and drain. This uh, pressure reducing valve it's not going to be so easy to replace. I may have to pull the expansion tank first. Just so we have a better working environment. And then we're going to clean all these burners. spinning around. <sighs> Let's put some resistance on it. She ain't budging. Alright, took a lot of persuasion. Used the giant Phillips screwdriver 
I wedged it behind there, hammered it in with my Milwaukee impact driver, and I got the screw out. There she is. One piece. I'm gonna remove the two wires for the rollout switch. And we're gonna take out all of our burners. Wow. Wow, that's all I could say. I have never, ever, ever seen burner tube so filthy before. My God. Wow, look at that. <laughs> wow. All right. I'm gonna clean that out of there. All that dirt, all the burners out. I'll take the pilot burner out with the, uh, the pilot burner tube, vacuum all that nasty stuff out. I don't know about you, but I think it looks night and day difference now. I didn't clean the top yet, but everything inside the, I guess the burner vestibule with the boiler vestibule is clean. Yeah, it's really that clean. And smash that thumbs up button right now and subscribe. The look just deserves it alone. Nicey nice. Took all the burners out. I uh, tapped them on the on the floor. I uh, used a little wire brush in between each of the slats and then sprayed it down with WD-40. Wiped them off with my rag. And reinstalled. We're gonna put our uh, plate back on, clean that off, and then uh, work on our pressure reducing valve and our tri decator gauge. <sighs> I gotta swear they don't make, I gotta swear right now, they don't make this effing easy. Jesus effing Christ, come on, really? Come on, man. Why? Why must you make this so complicated? Really? You really expect anyone to get that screw out with the gas valve in there, the pilot tubing, all that good stuff? Like, there's no way of getting that out easy. But nonetheless, our burner plate is back into place. Uh, we'll put our combustion cover back on with the rollout switch, dust that off, and then hit up our tri decator and pressure reducing valve. All right, the cover's back on. Rollout switch is reconnected with the two wiring, two wires. I did not reinstall the shipping screw. That's all that screw is, just a shipping screw. And by the amount of dirt and dust we found uh, going into those, the burner tubes, she was never taken out before. The rest of the boiler vestibule is clean, dusted everything off. Um, before we get to that, let's just test our capacitor. All right, I removed the capacitor. I just loosened up one of those screws right there and I got onto the floor. We have a four microfarad capacitor using our Fluke multimeter. We have a set to read capacitance and one lid on there. And we're reading 3.2, so she is out of specification. We like to see no more than 10%. 10% of 0.4, a four would be 0.4, so that would be a low reading of 3.4. We're reading 3.2, so we really should replace this. Um, I don't think I have a four microfarad capacitor um, on the truck. We do have plus five wow we do have a we don't think we have a four but i definitely have a five uh let's go to the truck all right i had a four in the truck so i put that in it's not an amrad it's a titan hd but i had the four oh, a little bit of dust up there but we're okay um everything inside here is now done we're gonna make note of the model and serial number, put that into our house call pro uh, property profile, along with the indirect. <sighs> Let's take out this uh, expansion tank. <sighs> the hell? This 
try to cater gauge. Has definitely seen better days. At one point, you know, she was completely submerged in the water. I wonder if that's brass. It could be bronze. And I wonder if I can melt that down. <laughs> I'm joking. On the Mikey Pipes Uncensored channel, uh, we have a propane fired melting furnace that we put our scrap copper in we take apart our blower motors our fan motors our circulators take the copper out and melt it down pretty cool all right let's put a new triticator gauge in i have the uh, honeywell why they changed their name to residio is beyond me honeywell is a great name still is but why they separated that oh, who put teflon tape on that before hmm hmm all right, regardless, it's installed. Hopefully it works. I got to uh, disconnect our backflow prevention device and take out this Watts half-inch pressure using valve and install the uh, Kalefi that's over there. We're also going to take out this, this Kalefi automatic air vent. We'll put a new one in just because I don't think she's still working. Well, looks like the reason why she wasn't letting any water in because she's full of cocky. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you, wow, that's, that's packed. <laughs> that's insane. That is full of cocky. <laughs> Thousand percent. Wow. Crazy. All right, now uh, let's clean off our threads with the brush. Throw some new uh, PTFE tape on there and put the new valve on. All right, I cleaned up the threads. I got the Blue Monster tape on there. Love the Blue Monster. Really, really awesome. Too bad it's made in China. Um, we're going to clean this up. A lot of so filthy, this boiler. Oh my God. Look at this. No one cares. You have this very expensive power plant in your basement and... No one really cares, and it really pisses me off how dirty people don't take the care. You're going to tell me that this was just serviced in 2021? I say bullshit. There's no way this was done three years ago. It wasn't properly done at least three years ago. All right. Let me put the uh, Kalefi half-inch pressure reducing valve in with gauge. All right, the new Kalefi half-inch pressure-reducing valve is in. Uh, yeah, that's in the way a little bit, but I guess we'll kick it off to the side. It is what it is. I guess I could rotate this a little bit and... Uh, yeah, let me uh, put it right there, right in front of it. It looks kind of dumb that way. So maybe I just rotate. Oh, damn, the whole boiler's moving. <laughs> uh, you know what? I like it this way. You could easily turn this. You could see the pressure gauge that way. All right, we'll just leave the relief valve that away. As long as it doesn't hit my expansion tank, we're good. Let's turn the water on. Good. Valve's closed. That won't let me do it that way. Let's close this valve. And let's rehang the expansion tank. All right, the expansion tank is reinstalled. You guys knew that I was gonna move the pressure reducing valve out of the way. So my drip light can go straight down. Let's turn the water on. So I should do yearly maintenance on this then, right? You should. Like there's there's that one screw that's on here. It did not want to come out. I even got the the the, uh, the multi tool to try to get it out. Finally, I shoved enough stuff like the screwdriver behind it, behind this plate where it meets that to push some stress on it. The screw and I was able to get it out. But it it was it did not want to come out. That screw and the screw over there, like the next screw I used. I, I go to, which is take this plate off. That didn't want to come out either. I'm like, oh my god, this is the the boy. The screws never want to come out. And they always come out. Let's turn it on. Um, let's turn on the circulate, the zones for the basement for the first floor. Unless it'll raise it up the temperature. 
first floor is actually on already. It is on, yeah. And basement is also on. So we'll wait for that to kick on and oh, I need gas. Do a pre startup systems check. STA1, standby. Okay, 15. Waiting for limit to close. Four, pre purge. And that's followed by five, which is spark. And seven. high on the carbon monoxide O2 eh, it's okay CO2 8.18 percent let's see if we make some adjustments to that all right made a slight adjustment to the gas valve pressure on the outlet side maybe a little bit too much our O2 is 12 percent now all right, made a couple more adjustments on our gas pressure. We're now at 29, 30. And it's going up and down a little bit there. And now it's going up more than I thought it was before. <laughs> 7.1 on our O2 and 7.73 on our CO2. Gross efficiency of 83.1%. Stack temperature of 364.5 degrees. So uh, I'm quite, quite comfortable with these numbers. I would like to be as close to zero as possible with the carbon monoxide. Uh, we're at 35. Um, if I decrease the pressure too much, we're gonna be below our minimum manifold pressure of 3.5 inches. So we have seven and a half coming in on our gas supply and we are roughly 3.5 four five on our outlet side and that's bare minimum where we need to be i have other videos i don't, don't show everything on my uh, the videos here but i just want to show you a full cleaning on this burnham power vented pvg5 140,000 btu gas fired boiler two zones for space heating with those two zone valves showed you how to purge we have the indirect pretty nice uh real quick i'll identify some components we have this transformer here which is more than likely feeding our voltage to our zone valves we don't want to use the, the transformer off of the boiler if and when at all possible uh junction box for the other low voltage controls uh the switch here um this is utility power and this is for inverter they have a they, they're using this as a switch not as a disconnect disconnect is up the top of the basement stairs this is our 24 volt low water cutoff of course our new tri decada gauge right there which reads temperature and pressure 30 psi relief valve back there automatic air vent extra number 30 expansion tank our kalefi half inch pressure reducing valve with optional gauge backflow prevention device these three this manifold right here is our purge stations for on our return side. This is the basement. This is the first floor. This is that indirect independent circulator for the indirect circulator for the two zones venting. Inside the front hood, we have our Burnham uh, integrated hydronic control board, transformer, inducer motor, gas valve, rollout switch. Pressure switch to prove that our uh, inducer assembly our draft motor is running so other than that we good all right i spent the last 15 minutes really trying to dial this down let's clipboard the results and we'll print and store the printout right there 
All right, 319.24, tune up the motor capacitor, a triticator gauge, combustion test, my initials on the service tag. I got a valve tag on a water heater supply, boiler water supply, gas for the boiler. Even got our phone over the opposite side. Let's not forget our hose. We don't want to leave our hose. I just picked this up from supplyhouse.com about a month ago and I've only used it a few times and I would hate to leave it behind. And I know I'm getting some water on the floor, but we're kind of washing the guy's floor a little bit. It needs it. <laughs> System's up and running. I had the basement zone manually open. Now it's closed. Our first floor is still on. Let's check for circulation. That's blazing hot to the touch. Here's that indirect. She's cold. And that is warm, very hot. Let's check our indirect temperature before we leave. I think I gotta take a little screw and take that out. Okay. I already got my tool bag in the truck, so good thing I carry the Leatherman that I got from a certain company that makes combi boilers uh, that I used to love. They sent this to me when I sold, I don't know, a hundred of their systems. Let's take the front cover off. Let's see what our temperature is set to. Uh, looks like we are set to 120. We have a thermostatic mixing valve? No, let's just crank this up a little bit. And uh, let's make sure that clicks. Let's make sure we have circulation here now. Just heard that circulator come on. Waiting for the air. Sorry, waiting for the circulator to circulate. Hmm. Nothing yet. Interesting. Hmm. Well, I guess it's a good thing I still have my hose here. So let's close this valve. Let's open this. She's getting hot. Let's see if we get any air out of this bad boy. You know what's gonna happen as soon as I let this go, right? <laughs> I got it wrapped around there. We are getting a lot of air out of there, as you can see. So, good thing I did that. That would suck. It's a lot of air. Wow. She's hot, though. A lot of air. No automatic air valves on any of the piping. Hmm. Let's open this, get that little pocket of air that could be resting there and get that out of there. Okay, let's close. Let's open that back up and then we're gonna make sure this heats up. The boiler's cold now. Feel this rise in temperature as the boiler makes up that water, that hot water to replace, replenish all the hot water I took out of it by purging. Boy, is there a cheese grater here? I don't know. Maybe they're grating soap. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at our temperatures with a picture, here is the uh, the FLIR. This is uh, the model that connects right to your phone. Uh, I believe it works on Android as well. Uh, it's laggy a lot of times, maybe needs a firmware, firmware update. Um, but if we take a look at our boiler right here, there's that circulator for the two zone valves. 
see the response rate, the refresh rate is kind of weak. Here is that other circulator for the indirect. And as you can see now, we're 100, and 100 degrees. Again, we should have a piece of tape on there in order to get a good temperature feel. Otherwise, it's just reflecting off of the pipe. So if you had a piece of tape on there, that would really be great. Here's that return, which is right there. See, look at this calibrating. Okay, our exhaust pipe, if you wanna take a look at that. We still gotta cover that little hole that we drilled. We'll use some silver tape. Not masking tape, but silver tape. There's our flue pipe. And I know someone's gonna comment about it, but the copper pipe is not resting on the flue. There is about a half of an inch gap right there. Okay, so there's the full picture. Let's take a look at the water heater. So the pipe that has the expansion tank, that's our domestic cold water inlet. The one with the pressure reducing valve, sorry, the relief valve. That's our domestic hot water outlet. And then we have our two supply and return from the boiler. And then let's not forget about our leak that we have right there. <laughs> okay, we good. And this is for all of you who thought that I was gonna forget the tape over the hole I drilled. Tape works best. There you go. See? And even left that extra one right there. <laughs>